she died and returned with a message. I want to start by saying how much I enjoy your channel. Every day, I watch your videos and find comfort in the idea that there's something better waiting for us after we leave this world. In 2015, I had a near-death experience where I saw things that I believe will happen in the future. At first, I didn't understand what I saw, but over the past few years, I've been able to connect the dots and see a clearer picture. Unfortunately, I wasn't given specific dates for these events. My near-death experience occurred when I was 18 years old. I was at a party with my boyfriend Mike, celebrating the end of summer before we went off to college and work. Mike got drunk, which I didn't like, so I refused to ride home with him. A friend offered to let us stay over, but I needed to go home. I asked around for another ride and a friend agreed, but I had to sit in the back of her boyfriend's truck. I felt safe with them because they were sober, unlike Mike. On the way home, we stopped at a convenience store and then continued on. But just a few miles later, we saw headlights coming toward us on our side of the road. The next thing I remember is waking up on the side of the road in pain. I had been thrown out of the truck bed during the collision, which may have saved my life. Emergency responders arrived, and a police officer stayed with me until I was taken to the hospital. At the hospital, the doctors told me I was heading into surgery. I was then given something in my IV drip that knocked me out. This was my first surgery ever, but I have to say that once I went unconscious, I felt nothing. The pain I had been in moments before vanished. I no longer even knew I existed. That was until I heard a loud pop and was suddenly looking down on my body as the surgeon was screaming that my pulse was dropping and to get a crash cut. For some reason, this didn't scare me, it almost felt like I was watching it happen to someone else. I no longer felt like that body was me. How could it be? I was right there, above it. I decided to look around more and floated down the hallways, exploring the hospital. I found I was able to float through walls as well. When I accidentally entered a storage room full of sheets and hospital blankets, next I went to the emergency room lobby, where I saw my mother crying as my father tried to reassure her that everything was going to be fine. Looking back, I think I should have felt some empathy towards what my mother was going through. However, at the time, I remember thinking she will be okay in time. Deciding to check on my body again, I floated my way back to the operating room where the surgeon was actively trying to resuscitate me. I then noticed the tunnel appear above the table and curiosity took over. I had to see what was inside so I went in. The inside of the tunnel was dark but I was not afraid. I would say I floated down the tunnel, however, this would be untrue. I did not float, it floated me. The tunnel began to pull me down and the speed increased until I was going faster than I had ever gone in my life. Mike would love this, I thought. Up ahead, I saw a pinpoint of light appear in the distance and wondered what it was. The closer I got to this light, the more it grew in size until it was almost all I could see. It filled all except for the very edges of the tunnel. Arriving at the light was an experience all by itself. Not knowing what to expect, I had no preconceived notions about how I should feel. On earth, I had been only 18 and had never heard of anyone going to the light before. Nevertheless, I found myself at this light, and there are absolutely no words to accurately describe it, but I will try. It is brighter than our own sun, but does not hurt your eyes to look straight at it. It radiates a love that is a million times greater than any you could possibly imagine. And when I first arrived, it felt as if I connected to the light, where I was greeted almost like an I come in peace message. The light made sure I was at ease. After this, the light informed me. I say informed because it did not speak, yet somehow I knew its intentions, that I was to have my life review before proceeding. The life review, there is so much to say about it, and it is an intense experience unto itself. I was shown my life on earth in completion from beginning to end. I watched my birth and my death and everything in between. I felt every bad or good feeling I had ever given anyone from their point of view, while at the same time experiencing it again from my own point of view. I discovered that many times in my life, when I thought I was in the right, I had been in the wrong, and things I had said or done due to my own short-sightedness had caused emotional pain to the other person. I felt their pain. The life review was not all bad though. The times I had brought someone joy were also shown, and I felt that as well. It was like having your emotions thrust onto a bipolar roller coaster and being told to buckle up. 
you have no idea when it will begin or end, and you have no clue what twists, turns, loops, and drops await you. When my life review ended, I thought the next step would be judgment. I had no idea whether this meant heaven or hell for me, but I anticipated either. Suddenly, I found my head flooded with images, horrible images that I could not make stop and had no idea what they were. I don't know how long this lasted, but when it ended, I said, almost to myself instead of to anyone in particular, what was that? Then, I heard a voice behind me answer. The voice was powerful yet gentle at the same time. It said, those are things to come before your true judgment. The voice then told me I was to be sent back because it was not my time yet. I didn't even get a choice because there is no way I would have chosen to come back here. I traveled back to my body through the same tunnel I had arrived in and entered my body with great force. When I awoke, I saw my parents in my hospital room. It was then that I learned I was the only survivor of the accident. The driver of the vehicle that hit us had been drunk, and no, it wasn't Mike. He is still alive with a wife and a son, living somewhere in Indiana. The doctors had done intensive repairs to me in order to save my life. I had a ruptured spleen, and they had to correct several places where I was internally bleeding. I'd also had fluid building up on my brain that required them to crack my skull and relieve it. In the middle of the surgery, I suffered a heart attack and flatlined for over four minutes. Doctors told me that it would be a long road to recovery, but the worst was over. I spent over a month in the hospital before coming back home. Once home, I began writing down everything I remembered from my experience. I wanted to keep track of it all. As time passed, I thought about it less until I saw the Capitol building on January 6. That triggered the first of what I'll call my visions, though I don't claim to be psychic. Below, I'll share what else I saw and my own understanding of it. I won't know how accurate my interpretations are until these events happen. Fair warning, none of these visions are positive, and I'm unsure if they can be changed. Only time will tell. First, I saw the world's economy collapse as China demanded repayment of the debt owed by the US government. This led to World War II, not through nuclear attacks as many might expect, but through governments waging wars against their own people. People worldwide, especially the poor, rose up against their rulers, leading to global riots and unrest. Even after civilians regained control, they faced new challenges as different groups vie for power. I witnessed people being confined in fenced areas and governments enforcing population control laws worldwide. The world turned into a battleground, with cities suffering from hunger and constant conflict, where food became the new currency. I want to emphasize that I'm not claiming to predict the future, these are just my interpretations. I've never shared my near-death experience before because I fear people might think I'm crazy or believe I have special powers. What are your thoughts on my experience? Share them in the comments below. Remember to cherish your loved ones, as life is unpredictable. Until the next video, take care and stay safe.